Cool. Yeah. So I'm just gonna pull up hemoglobin. Uh, so hemoglobin is a uh, you know fairly large protein. Uh, it's actually the uh, the main protein that carries around the oxygen in your blood. Might be a little bit hard to see in 2D, so I'm just gonna show the surface. And that allows us to get up in the binding sites. So we could see here that there's this nice little pocket. And in the pocket, mm -hmm. we have a ligand. So if mm -hmm. we just go ahead and we, uh, yeah, we select that, we could even split that out. And so now this allows us to just, you know, take out that, that whole ligand from the binding site. And, and so what mm -hmm. happens is you have this protein whose job it is to carry this around. And what's important about this is, is you see this little orange bit in the middle here, I'll, uh, do a nice ball and stick view. So you see, um, yeah, this orange bit in the middle, that orange bit is an iron. Okay. And so, yeah. uh, when, when you, when you breathe and, and oxygen goes into your lungs, uh, this is the thing that will actually help, you know, transport the, uh, the oxygen, uh, through okay, your bloodstream. Cool. Um, but you know, these binding sites are really the sort of center of all biology or human drugs, at least it seems. And they're these little obscure pockets nestled in things that happen to have the perfect shape and charge yep. for, for others. And that's pretty much what pharmaceutical companies spend their days trying to figure out. Am I right to say that? I'd say that it's pretty common for these, these pharmaceutical researchers to kind of live in this, in this pocket space where you have these, um, you know, uh, small molecules being bound within them and interacting with different structures. And of course, mm -hmm. if we were to uh, go back and you know, uh, hide the surface, oops, let's go ahead and select that. Uh, if we hide the surface there, you know, we're able to see that, you know, this looks like a bunch of spaghetti. So, you know, right. how do we go from spaghetti to, uh, to actually understanding? So, you know, through various aspects of this, you know, splitting off a single chain, this is one of right. the, the four chains that actually makes it. Yeah, you know, doing things like this and really trying to break it down into what each individual piece is. You know, like this mm -hmm. is, um, you know, this is a bunch of chemicals where we have this, this chain that really starts at one end and then mm -hmm. goes all the way through, all the way to the other end, which we could see yeah. over here. So, you know, if we were to follow it, it's really just, you know, a big chain that just keeps right. going all the way around. So it's like uh, a string of information that gets really, folded yeah. into, into a 3D structure that actually, uh, you know, creates biological things. You know, this is us and this is our, our plants and our pets and our bacteria that are, that are everywhere. You know, the viruses like this is life you know it's it's this yeah. information that is um uh, you know encoded from uh your, your dna in your body and you know that that code you know this this dna that's in your body is mm -hmm. uh you know different proteins are, are bound to it mm -hmm. where you know the the proteins are actually let's see no 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 the proteins are, are kind of like reading the, the sequence of DNA from your body. And then in mm -hmm. turn, they're actually producing more proteins. So it's like, right. you know, there's this whole protein factory where the information is coming from your genome, uh, from mm -hmm. your, your DNA, RNA. Um, and that information is actually being uh, transcoded into a sequence of instead of the nucleic acid, you know, ACTG mm -hmm. that we see here, uh, mm -hmm. with the complementary base pairs, uh, it's mm -hmm. actually encoded into a sequence of amino acids. Uh, which right. is what we see uh, over here. You know, these are these are all of our amino acids.